Okay, I'm sold. I have been watching YouTube a lot and mainly the Linux videos. Now, I want my own Linux setup that looks amazing. A good place to find cool looking Linux setups people are running is Unix porn. No, not that one, but this one. So here's the plan. Install the Linux distro inside of a virtual machine and make it look mind boggling or at least try to make it look nice. By the way, a virtual machine is just a fake computer inside of your main computer. Now, the question is which distro of Linux should I choose from? Obviously, I should go with Arch Linux when I have no experience at all. So I quickly yoink the ISO image for Arch Arch Linux and created a virtual machine. By the way, I named my user Pika because I want to take a Pikachu. <laughs> Uh, did you get it? Yeah, whatever. When I first started the VM, I was presented with this black box, which is apparently what you use to install Arch Linux. Now, I don't really have much experience, so let's look online. Installing Arch Linux for the first time. Help. Should I go with the official link? Probably. Yeah, I quickly got bamboozled with Arch Wiki, so I looked for another way. This guide is telling me that I should enable EFI in my virtual box before installing Arch Linux. Let's do this procedure. I'm going to shut down my machine, then go into system settings, enable EFI, and then click Click OK, then start the machine one more time. Oh wait, this article knows its readers. It's saying, let's make things easier on ourselves. Just run this command. As you say, Mr. Article. Oh wait, I can copy and paste commands directly from Windows. Well, I guess I will just have to type this in then. Set font ter 132B. Whoa, that is not, whoa. How do I revert back now? I don't want this to be this big. Can I select a different font? Hmm, seems like I cannot. What if I just type set font to see the list of available fonts? Oh, it's back to normal. Anyways, let's not change the font for now. Verify connectivity to the internet. Let's do a simple ping test, I suppose. Eh, seems to be working. Next up is partitioning the disk. F disk dash, wait, is that a, is that a one or an L? It looks like a one, maybe not. What if I do one? F disk invalid options, dash dash one. Oh, it's an L. Boom, now what? For basic partitioning, we will create the following layout. Dash dev, dash VDA one, EFI system partition, slash dev, slash VDA two, swap partition, slash dev, slash VDA three, Linux partition. Okay, don't know what any of that means. So I just keep putting in the commands, I suppose. Meh, guess I'll just keep copying this article until something breaks. Oh. <laughs> I did not expect it to break in the very next command. CF disk cannot open slash dev slash VDA. No such file or directory. Wait, what? Did I miss something? Oh, so I did F disk to see my disks and this article has slash dev slash VDA and I have slash dev slash SDA. A rookie mistake on my part. So I should say CF disk slash dev slash SDA. Boom. And now I select GTP. Then with free space highlighted, hit new from the bottom menu. Menu, you can navigate the menu options using the tab or arrow keys. Okay, I hit tab and then press enter, I guess. Wait, no, I selected quit instead. So what if I press shift tab? Does it go back? Yes, it does. Type 500M and press enter. Okay, with this partition selected, I pick type to be EFI system. Okay, that was easy. Create swap partition. Oh, that was just one of the three that I have to create. So basically repeat the whole thing until the type selection and then select Linux swap. Okay, that is it for the swap. Now is the time for root partition. The same thing, but select Linux file system instead of this time. Configuring the root partition is done. You're all set. Whoa, I expected it to be a lot harder because of this video. Write changes to the disk. So I just select write and click enter, I guess. Are you sure you want to write the partition table to the disk? Oh, I can never be more sure of it. We're done here. Okay, create file system. Wait, what? Didn't we just do this one? <laughs> when the article says, what did we just do? It's now time to format those partitions with the required file systems. For the EFI one, slash dev slash VDA one, for me, it's SDA1. Create a FAT32 file system. Oh, these are definitely different commands. Okay, I guess I keep following the Mr. Article. Okay, that was pretty easy. Just had to type the same commands. Install Arch Linux. Oh, now we're talking or reading, I guess. Now, after all that somewhat boring disk partitioning and formatting, we have finally arrived at the most exciting part, the actual installation of Arch Linux. That's what I like to hear or read. <laughs> Okay, I just did whatever Mr. Article told me to do and now I have to enter this command to install Arch System. A bunch of stuff just happened on my screen. Honestly, doing all of this makes me feel like I'm doing something super complex like in those movies, but in reality, I'm just typing in whatever commands this article is telling me to. Next up is configure the installed Arch System. Gen F stab. <laughs> 
<laughs> did a bunch of stuff and now it's finally time to install a desktop environment and to be honest this was way longer of a process than i thought it would be so see you in 69 years once i get everything working okay i just wasted an hour following a random article and when it said to reboot and log into the system i was taken back to the same black box from the beginning i should have just used the arch install script as expected arch install script took way less time than having to do everything manually bro i have this fucking black box for a good hour now you know what fuck this i'm not doing it anymore